let's make a motor. And to do that, we're going to need these bits. Now, I'll make these available in Thingiverse, and all you have to do is download them and print them off. When you've printed them off, take this ring, and these are 15 millimeters by 5 millimeters neodymium magnets. There's 12 of them, and they're pushed in there, north, south, north, south, all the way around, and glued in with a bit of super glue. Then we need to take the stand and push a couple of skater bearings, which are 22 mil by 8 mil by 7 mil into the stand. Then we take this bit here. This bit pushes in that way around. into the ring and glues in and then this bit pushes in that way around and glues in. We feed that through there and stuff the axle in. Then we're going to need this. This is a solenoid. Actually it's an M10 bolt 70 millimeters long with a load of copper wire wound around it but that's exactly what a solenoid is. But then, of course, solenoids have a very useful property. If I pass a DC current down this, in this case 6 volts DC, of course it becomes magnetic until I turn the current off, and then the magnetism fails. That is, in fact, the basics of any motor. That doesn't mean very much, of course, until I add this cradle and pop my solenoid in the cradle. So if I connect my solenoid to a power supply, of course when I turn the power supply on, it'll turn this into a magnet. Now, the magnetic field depends on the direction the current is flowing. So if it flows, say, from positive to negative, this will become a south. If it flows from, if we swap them over, that will become a north. If this is a south, and that's a south, when this is turned on, what it'll do is push that away and attract that one, which is a north, because these are north-south, north-south. So let's turn on our power supply. And there we go. We get exactly what we would expect, that is, it attracts there. Now let's swap those wires over. And turn it on again. And exactly the same thing happens. It rotates, but because we're swapping the direction of the power that's being fed into this, then this magnetic field in the end of the solenoid is being forced to change. That changing magnetic field is what pushes away a magnet when it's the light pole, attracts the unlight pole, we swap that and this will continue to turn. That is the principle. Now normally of course you don't have one coil, you surround this by a load of coils, but one coil is enough to get that to actually work. Of course, it's a little tedious, swapping wires over by hand and flipping switches. What we really need to have is an automatic way of doing that. And of course, there is a way of doing that. It's called the hedge bridge. Now, the hedge bridge is really just a couple of switches that swap the positive and negative wires over to create that effect. And we can make those switches out of a whole host of things. Now, I quite like them to make them from this. This is just a relay. A relay is a couple of switches in there controlled by a coil. When the coil goes on, then a little lever moves between two points acting like a switch. Of course, we don't need to use a relay. We could quite equally use a transistor, which is just an electronic switch in this case. But this makes it obvious that it's a switch. And so we can make our hedge bridge out of a relay by wiring up this circuit. So there is one other problem because I'm only using a single solenoid and that is direction of rotation. I want this to rotate clockwise so we can just stick a second hand on it or attach it to the gears. And normally what you find is there's an uneven number of magnets and poles or solenoids and you turn them on in sequence and because they're uneven it will ensure the direction of rotation. On this one what I'm going to do is a simple mechanical solution and use a ratchet and pole. So to fit it, it goes on that side, slides on there, glues in place. But before you glue it, you line up the bottom of the tooth with the magnet so that when it rotates, it will stop exactly where we want it to stop. And because it's a ratchet, when we turn it on, it can't go that way, it can only go that way, and so we ensure rotation. It also has a weird shaped pole that goes with it that slots in there. The axle goes through its hole in the base and there's a little notch in the pole where we'll run a rubber band to act like a spring. So as that rotates, it'll be pushed out of the way and snap back in place when it gets to the next notch. 
So here it is, set up with its H-bridge relay and its little ratchet mechanism to control it. Now, the ratchet's a little awkward to set up. You need to arrange it so the magnet is just maybe two or three millimetres below the solenoid, and that takes a little bit of fiddling about to do. And the rubber band at the back that goes between the two holes as a spring is relatively slack. The pole here catches it and bounces back. But when I turn the power on, this will move round in the right direction every time I press this switch once. This switch breaks the power to the relay coil. There's a separate power going into the actual relay switches, so that coil being on or off changes the position of the switches. And the relay works as a H-bridge, swapping the positive and the negative around for us every time I press that switch. Right, let's have a look at it. Power on. And switch. 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 <laughs> Put a little hand on here so you can see it turning. That's awesome! So we have created our own stepper motor controlled by this relay as a hedge bridge. Now it has 12 magnets, they're set 30 degrees apart, so when I turn it on for 5 seconds and then off for 5 seconds it'll make 2 movements. So the time period is 10 seconds and the duty cycle is 50%. Now, Using a relay is just to make it obvious that what's happening are movement of switches. We're only switching, that's all we're doing. A relay is possibly not the best choice, but then we could make it out of a solid state relatively easily because a transistor is also just a switch. The timing signal we used was me pressing this button here. There are lots of other ways of creating a timing signal that will turn something off and on. For example, you could use a 555 timer in a stable mode, or maybe an Arduino, and I'm willing to bet you could use a pendulum. But there are other things to consider before we put the timing signal in, so I thought I would make that the subject of another video. The heart of it, creating a step and motor, controlling its movement, is what we've just done. And whatever you want to do with it, whether it's clocks or robots or whatever, or position for something like a 3D printer, then that is always going to be the heart of it. And a 3D printer motor controller uses exactly the same ideas. It's just that you have slightly more poles. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and watch out for the rest in this series. Oh, please do remember to like and subscribe.